my sister, you are not ordinary. You carry the God of the universe. My brother, you are not an ordinary person. You carry the God of the whole of earth. the Lord today magnifying the name of the Lord. Amen. It is a beautiful day. Hallelujah. It is a wonderful day. Glory to God. And the Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 1 and verses 37, when the angel of the Lord went to Mary to deliver the message to the virgin Mary and the angel of the Lord told her that she will give birth to a, a baby uh, and the name will be called Jesus. You know Mary was like, how will this happen? And I thank God for the word because then the word of God will never be hindered. Hallelujah. I thank God for what the age of the Lord told Mary about Elizabeth because the age of the Lord told uh, Mary and Elizabeth is also pregnant. Now she is six months old. The one who was told is barren. Now she is pregnant. And the Bible continues to say, is there anything that will be impossible with our God? Is there anything that will be impossible with our God? And this morning I'm telling everyone, is there anything that will ever be impossible with our God? And we all together say, no, there is nothing that will ever be impossible with our God. What is that that is standing before you? This morning, open your heart. As the word of God comes forth, tell yourself according to the word of God, there is nothing, nothing. Name it and start to, to say there is nothing that can hinder what God is doing in your life, what God is doing in the life of your family members, what God is doing in this ministry as we cross over to celebrate 14 years, we are declaring there is nothing that can hinder our going forward. Hallelujah. There is nothing. Yeah, hallelujah. Nothing, nothing, nothing is impossible with our God. Nothing. Name it, name more of them, and then conclude and say nothing. Nothing is impossible with our God. Nothing, nothing is impossible with our God. To them that are streaming online, nothing is impossible with our God. Trust him, trust him, for there is nothing that is impossible with our God. Hallelujah. Let me take this opportunity to welcome our visitors. Is it your first time to fellowship with us? Let me see by the soul of your heart. We love visitors. And let us celebrate our dear sister Leah. Welcome in the house of the Lord. The one who is next to her, hug her. Tell her welcome in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Another thing we're going to do, our missionaries are back. Say they are back. They are back. Amen, amen, amen. The man of God is back in the house. Our team is back in the house. Amen, amen, amen. And we want to honor them in a special way. This is how we're going to honor them. Their names will come down there and I'll call their names one by one. Then they will line up here. Then they will receive a flower of welcome back. And at the end of the service, amen, amen, amen. At the end of the service, we're going to eat ranch together because they are special. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. And also we have a cake for them. We have a cake for them. They are so dear to us. And we honor what God honors. Hallelujah. We give honor what, and what God honors. So, I'm coming this way so that their names will come there following. Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome back. Amen, amen, amen. And we are reading this fast together. We are reading this fast together as we welcome them back. Okay. How beautiful upon the mountains 
at the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, you are God, reigns, hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. How beautiful are those feet that took the gospel out, amen. for them before we give uh, Apostle Moses to give thanks that they are back. I will allow them to say something, two minutes, two minutes, apart from Apostle. Apostle, yours is coming. So we start here. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God again. Um, thank you for your support. <laughs> Thank you for your support, and we appreciate it. The mission was awesome, and we give God all the glory. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Praise God again. Um, all I can say is the mission was a life-changing to myself as well. And thank you for all your support, and we look forward to another one. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God again. I don't know, but I have fire. Amen. I have fire. Let me tell you, the mission was amazing. Amen? If you watched it, you know. If you didn't, you missed out. Amen? Let me tell you, God is working wonders in Kenya. Amen? The youth is coming to Christ. Amen? Amen? Can we give a, sh a shout? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. I just want to say thank you so much for your support here, even those in Kenya. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate everything. We do not take life for granted. Amen? I, we just want to say that it did not only change their lives, but it changed ours. We grew spiritually. Amen? And we do not take that for granted. We just want to thank God and give him all the glory. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God again. Uh, we're excited to be back. Um, and for me, I just wanted to say thank you to um, the men and the women of God in the house. Um, they've celebrated us, but we also want to celebrate you. So if you, if, if you can give my mom a rose, too. <laughs> and when we were gone... Um, <laughs> Amen. So we do not take it for granted that as a youth, you took us with you. And when we were there, you really took care of us. And when we were there, we really felt that we had a father. So we do not take it for granted um, the way that you took care of us spiritually and just in everything that we needed. And for you, Mom, the way that Kingdom Moments still happened every single day. Can we clap for her? Amen. So we just thank God that you know, you have availed yourself, and the missions have been going on for a while, amen? If I'm not wrong, they started in 2008, so that would make it 10 years, and now you have brought us with you, and so even as we've stepped into this new chapter, we just look forward to bringing more and more souls, amen? And what I feel is that by taking us with you, prophetically, you set up pillars in people's homes, that there will be youth, because of these youths, there will be families that will not be left behind because these youths will stand in the gap of their families, amen? So whatever you have sold unto our lives, may you receive a double portion, amen? amen. Praise God. Praise God again. Um, amen. It's good to see all of you once again. And uh, I'd like to thank God, the church, and my mom for the opportunity to uh, go and minister to young people like me. It was a great experience, and like they said, as we're ministering to them, I grew spiritually as well, and even as a person, and that is something I'll forever be grateful for, so thank you. And uh, something they forgot to say, receive greetings from every single school we went to, and our family back in Kenya, amen. Praise God. Praise God again. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Um, the trip has been wonderful, it was awesome, uh, and it was life-changing to all of us as well. And I believe that uh, next year, this whole group and those ones as well are going to come with us. Amen. Amen. Thank you for all your support and even for the people back at Kenya. Uh, because of your support, 700 souls were able to get saved. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Praise God. 
praise God again. Um, all I can say is thank you. And before I even talk, I want to uh, also give a, a special shout out to uh, Mama Elizabeth, Pastor Isaiah. I know they already got shout outs, but I also want to do like a personal. So they, so because I know they're watching. <laughs> and uh, also, also want to thank uh, Mogai and everybody else. And for me, I, it was just a humbling opportunity to even go out, serve, and be with the uh, with this youth. And uh, one verse I was listening to uh, as Apostle Moses was preaching on Sunday, he he talked about uh, when John sent his disciple to go ask, "Is that really the Christ?" And I feel for us as we went into the mission field, there was an opportunity to testify to many lives that there is really the Christ who has come and can change everybody's life. So we just want to say thank you for the opportunity to even go out to the field and thank you for even welcoming us back. Amen. Praise God. Praise God again. Um, I'm the last one. I don't know if there's any words left to say, but... I was, it's a really, it was a really humbling experience to just go and see so much thirst for God and so much hunger for God because I feel like sometimes we get, we get used to the anointing. And going to Kenya and seeing so many people looking at this church like you have all the answers. Like there, it was a mind-blowing experience because I pray that everyone in this room, you'd really, you don't get used to God because there's a way you can come to church and you just get used to the Christian flow. But going to Kenya and seeing these people, they, they, every day they just wanted more. They, they were never satisfied. They said, I want more of Christ. So I pray as us, the people who are supposed to be the, the feet to take the gospel, we never get tired. Amen? Thank you so much. Amen. Before we pray for them, this is a prayer of telling God, thank you. Let me welcome all the parents of this dear. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that you found vessels to use in Kenya. Thank you, Lord, that you found people in a voice that you can use to speak. You took this team from here to Kenya. And Lord, you did not only use them, but you kept them safe. Thank you that none has come with sickness or disease. None has returned weak. They have come back refired and strong. We thank you, Lord, that all are here. As Jesus said, I have not lost one. We thank you that you have kept all of them, and they are all here. We celebrate you. We honor you. We say thank you. Thank you, Lord, also for this revelation that you have even given to your servant to carry this young one and to begin laying a foundation of winning souls to the kingdom. The Bible says those that win souls are wise. So we decree that wisdom of winning souls will continue running with them in this great country in the name of Jesus. We pray for everyone that uh, uh, gave to support this mission, those back in Kenya and those who are here in this church, even the parents. Father, we thank you for them. We give you honor and we give you praise. When Jesus, you gave thanks for the bread and for the fish, there was a great increase. Now, Lord, as we give you thanks for these missionaries, next year there will be more increase of missionaries and more support in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we honor you in Jesus' glorious name. And the church shout amen. Amen. You all may be seated. Thank you so much. Amen, amen, amen. God is good. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Welcome, Apostle David Karanja. Woo! Welcome, man of God. Welcome, man of God. Amen, amen, amen. We may be seated. Amen, amen. We are excited to be back again. We are, number one, very, very grateful number one, to God for the opportunity that he availed to us and the entire you, the, the you that we went with uh, to be able to touch lives. I, I want to, before I, I go to touch life, give a special thanks to Apostle Moses and his family. Praise the Lord. Let's celebrate him. Let's all stand. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to pray that as your servant, bring the word. 
that be that your word will come with the insight. Your word will come with the revelation, O oh God. We pray that in the name of Jesus, let this your servant be given at utterance. Let articulation of your word be given to be able to communicate the divine truth. Let it be that in Jesus' name, Father, the hearers of the word, Father, will be impacted by the word. We pray for those who are streaming our service live. We pray for those who are streaming on YouTube, those who are streaming on Facebook. We want to pray that in the name of Jesus, Father, their lives will be impacted and their lives will be changed. We give you praise and we give you honor in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody celebrate Jesus to see you. So, man of God, let's celebrate the servant of God. Amen, 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 amen. Put your hands together for Jesus one more time. Hallelujah. Amen. The man of God has already prayed, so please would you turn to your neighbor to the right and to the left. Tell them thank you for coming. Okay, we have not finished. That is the right one. Okay, follow the instructions. The, the first one you greet, you say, thank you for coming. Uh -huh. And then you turn to the left again. Tell them thank you for coming. And then as you take your seats, you finish that statement this way. Thank you for coming even when the final game in the World Cup Russia is playing. <laughs> so we know you are a committed church member. <laughs> okay, I know some of you are not even aware of what is happening, especially ladies. But anyway, we thank God. Amen. I am so delighted to be here as I am always grateful for the opportunity <clears throat> that uh, uh, when I get an opportunity and an opportunity ex extended to me to come and uh, share the word of God. We were here with you on Sunday and uh, the man of God was with us uh, uh, in the spiritual realm and also live and uh, we, we're so happy for the team. It's good to see them again. Man, and, praise uh, the name of Jesus. Now I, I always uh, appreciate God's servant when he comes to minister to our place, and uh, one of the things uh, that Apostle does, and every time he comes to a church, I am sure before he starts to preach that he will heal somebody, and not, not healing, physical healing, but oh, let me put it this way, as a pastor of the church, I feel so good that after that message, somebody will improve in the way they serve God in our church. He came and he taught us on the issues to do with leadership taught us matters on the kingdom, and our church is better. And so I know there are places that I would want to go and pick one revelation and hit it. I can pick any. I can pick God who works miracles within 24 hours, and I will hit it, and uh, we will be on fire here. I will be somersaulting with this my cordless microphone, and it's going to be powerful. But uh, by the end of the day, we'll be excited, we'll be good, but uh, I may not leave something that somebody can quote in improving their services. And so it becomes my joy and my desire to every time when I get an opportunity to stand on this altar, to convert it to become like a class, though it's a main service, so that we can be able to get something. And also within my mandate, uh, that is the mandate of teaching on honor. That's why we're dealing on honoring and serving the dream of another. And uh, actually, I'm so grateful that uh, the book, and we have come with those books today, my latest book, that is a book on honor, exploits of honor, was dedicated. Actually, among the people I've acknowledged there is Apostle David Karanja because he's the one who launched the book last year, December. And I'm trusting God that uh, he will also launch my third book before the end of this year in Jesus' mighty name. So we are one family, even though we don't know each other so much, we are one family. I'm praying when I was seeing missionaries and I had more missionaries are coming to Kenya. I'm praying that when they come next time, they'll be able to visit our church so that uh, also we can extend our relationship. Probably one of the girls here, uh, we can become in-laws. <laughs> yeah, we can become in-laws. And so that uh, uh, when I visit, I'll be getting double honor <laughs> for the preacher and for the in-law. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, those of us who are here on Sunday, we, we 
took a journey on what to know on serving the dream of another person. Let me say this to every one of you, and you know it's there on the, in the YouTube. Uh, uh, there is something they have written concerning the former President Obama, and they say the message, or no, not the message, they call it the, uh, is it the message that made Obama the president? I, I, if you can go on YouTube and check that one. The speech, that's the word. The speech that made uh, Obama president. And when he was making that speech, he was not the president. He was not even campaigning to be the president. He was campaigning for another man. But he made a speech so passionately towards another man that opened the door for him. It is not how much you do to yourself. And take this message, move it out of church, take it to the marketplace, especially as a Christian. One of the reasons we have a problem with most Christians telling us to pray for them to get promotion, and rather than promotion, some of them are getting de de demoted, is because they think you are promoted by the anointing. There is the anointing part that promotes. That's why the Bible says Jesus is both the power of God and the wisdom of God. Praise the name of Jesus. And even Apostle Paul writes and says that our God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you think, you ask or think. So there is the asking part, that is prayer, and there is the thinking part. And he said the Lord is able to answer both. So what will make you live a great life outside there is where you are working, where you report tonight or tomorrow. Go and serve the dream of that person. Make it great. Make it better. Give all you have to make it better. The worst thing you can do in this life is to serve another man with a reserve energy for your own. Yeah. So that's why we, we saw when you are faithful with that which belongs to another, then you get your own. Praise the name of Jesus. And so we, 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 we concluded with that part. And today we are moving to part B of honoring and serving the dream of another. And today we are looking at that part of the owner of the dream or the dreamer. The person that God entrusted. The person that God entrusted with the dream. Or in other words, you can call him the dream carrier. If you are a bit modern, you can convert the dream and call the vision carrier. We talked about the vision or the dream, and we talk about the dream carrier. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter number uh, 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 10. We will read verse number 1. This is the longest verses we are going to read. And then we will read pausing a bit uh, so that we understand. Now, we said, I think, on Sunday that uh, one, of the, one of the best ways to enjoy the Bible is to always know who is writing and was writing to who, and if possible, and which season. And so Jesus Christ here is writing the book of Luke chapter 10, verse number 1, and say, after these things, the Lord, no, Jesus is not writing, Luke is writing, but it's Jesus here. He say, after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also, and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Now, watch something there. Jesus is not talking to everybody here. He's sending the first 70. Now, the book of Matthew chapter 10, we see Jesus sending 12. And, and, and Matthew will document their names and say who they are. But here the Bible says 70, and he sent them to where he himself would go. Now, you wonder, let me ask you a question. Those demons that manifested in school, the missionaries have a testimony, it is there, you can watch it. Why, why were they not coming out? Why were they in those... Why, 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 why were they in those children and still Jesus and God, they, belong, they own the whole universe? Why were they not removing them? Because the kingdom of heaven does not work that way. Just because he's there does not mean he's available. So he sent them where he himself he would come. Look at that. He would come does not mean literally where he would come with his legs. But for him to come down and manifest, there has to be somebody there. And so he said, where do you come now? Let's move to the next verse. The Bible says, after these things, the Lord... Up okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, you know I'm getting used to this one. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Now, something else you need to know. The men of God are the first lambs. The first lambs. You know, we only say, washirika and your kondo. The men of God are the lambs. And they are the ones, actually, the Bible says, they have been sent to the... I send you out as lambs among wolves. Did you get that one? This one is not sending 5,000. He's sending men of God. And if you read it in the book of Matthew chapter 10, he still they say the same. He sent the disciples and say, I am sending you like a lamp among wolves. So every man of God has at least two or three wolves 
surrounding him somewhere. <clears throat> yeah. By God's grace, when you get time next time or in the book, you'll understand this kind of wolves. So there are some people that are there. And Jesus said, you, never, you will never know them until they begin to talk. Yeah, you don't know because they can wear the clothes of the lamb or sheep. The difference is the way they talk. So when you sit down with a member of this church and you hear the way they talk about the man of God, you can know if they are the lambs or they are the wolves. You don't know the wolves by the suit they wear. You know them but when they open their mouth. So when your mouth is open, we identify you. We will not chase you because the Bible says, I send you to the wolf. So every man of God must have a wolf. It's not a choice. You don't pray that they go, no. I must have a one key wolf. So identifying the wolves is the best thing so that you know. <laughs> is it a wolf or a wolf is a what? Okay, whatever. This is a wolf and this is a, 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 a lamp. Okay? Now, let's move on. Carry neither money, bag, na, uh, uh, what's that one? What's that? The one that carried back. All right. Say no sandals. And don't greet any man on the way. So no special greetings to say help me. The same way the man of God has said that they did not go borrowing and they did not struggle in Kenya. Because they were sent without. But by God's grace you are able to make sure that they have. He said but whatsoever house you enter first say peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace shall rest on it. And if not, it will return to you. That's another topic that is on its own. You know, the prayer that is prayed by your man of God is not a guarantee that you will work for you. No. He say, if that place is worth the peace, then whatever you say shall remain. If not, it shall return with you. So it's possible to have a man of God preach and pray for that minute and then return with the prayers. Yeah. Return. It does not remain because he has prayed. When the man will say, be blessed, it does not mean automatically you are blessed. No, it is how you relate with the person that has been sent. And remain in the same house, eating, I love that one, hmm. eating and drinking such things as they give for the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to what? So one house, I was teaching on one message called the end time way of genuine prosperity. Can you imagine he's sending two by two and say, in every house you enter, either it's a small house, there's no enough food, but when you enter that house, don't move from house to house, but you'll be eating there. And in that house, they will pay you your salary. One house. Forget about the whole church. One house. One house. One house. Whatsoever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. So the league has changed from a house to a city. And say... Then, verse number nine, and heal the sick. So eat first, then uh, you deal with sickness later. Eat and then heal the sick. You, know, you, you get something here. Yeah. You don't jump and say, oh, the way. no, 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 no. Please, let's, let's, let's understand this. Men of God are to be used, not to be misused. So Jesus said, look at this. Jesus said, please, I am sending them with something for you. But don't go for something. Go for someone. Don't go for what he carries. Go for who he is. So let him be received. Let him be fed. Eat there. And you eat and don't move from house. So you eat, you rest, you eat again. And then later in the evening, you can bring the sick people. Not sick people first. And then eating later. It is Jesus saying it. So you can't correct him. <laughs> yeah. But whoever city you enter, and they do not receive you, now that we are going to the message, go out into it streets and say the very dust of your city which clings to us we wipe off against you nevertheless know this that the kingdom of God has come near you Mr. Bible say the kingdom of God was right at your doorpost so look at this now who was there was it the kingdom of the person who has entered the city the kingdom of the person the person. He said, in every city you enter. But he said, if they don't receive you, just walk, shake your dust and tell them the kingdom was there. In other words, I was carrying the dream. But according to God, it is not how well you treat my dream first. 
It is how well you treat me, the carrier of the dream first. Are you getting that one? Yeah. So he said, and it's going to be worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. Nevertheless, though, that the kingdom of God is all right. I've done now. He said, but I say unto you that I will do it will be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Now you know the sin of Sodom. You don't need to be told. Can you imagine Jesus comparing, dishonoring the servant that he has sent, dishonoring and not receiving them is equal or higher, a bit higher than the Sodom, the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah. So, so uh, le le let me just bring this one, just, just you get. Uh, uh, it, it means maybe, I don't know how people will be getting burned in heaven. So I don't know if there will be different temperature. So, so that means the kind of temperature that will be working on the people who chased and dishonored and worked to bring down the servants of God will be more heated than the Sodom and Gomorrah. So Sodom and, people, Sodom and Gomorrah people, their judgment will be, if, it, if heaven is like earth, to the way they sent us people, so people who were in Sodom, who are doing Sodom and Gomorrah, their sin was Sodomy. They, if they are jailed for 10 years, the people that chased away the servants of God and disrespected them, and took them for granted. Their own will be 20 years. <laughs> Is there in the scripture? You, you can't argue. If you tear in your Bible, your neighbor's Bible has that verse. It says the same. So you can't run away from it. But I say unto you that it will be more tolerable. It will be much okay. It will be much okay in that day for Sodom than for the city that has chased you. <laughs> now you look at that. How you handle the dream determines how your dream will be. So anytime you serve the dream, Joseph serves the dream of, the dream of Pharaoh, and Joseph's dream is fulfilled. But watch this now. How you handle the dreamer, the one who owns the dream, determines how heaven handles you. So anytime you serve the dream, let me put an example. Every time you serve the dream of Christ harvesters, you fertilize your own dream. The way you handle the dreamer, that is the visioner, Apostle David Karanja, matters how heaven will deal with you. <laughs> did you get that one? Yeah. I don't know why you did not say amen in the last one, and it's the one important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God knows that if you honor and you sow to this dream, give your resources to this dream and to this vision, your own will come to pass. But how you treat the one who was given. Now watch this. The Christ harvester's dream is for the benefit of humanity. Did you get that one? But the one who is carrying the dream is for the benefit of heaven. When heaven needed 700 plus souls in heaven. Heaven said, Apostle Karanja, stop what you're doing and your comfort here in a good country. One of the best things I love America is that there is no dust. And go to the country that is full of dust. Go there because I need 700 so, and as he told you, the reason we don't go so much, and let me put myself there, the reason we don't go for these missions a lot, if these, these missions, these missions of schools, you, 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 you can't be doing them just like that and feed your family. Uh -uh. No, we, we send Jesus. We, <laughs> we send prayers. We said, you see, it's good to talk the truth. Is that also? Yeah. We just said Jesus. And he said, Jesus, please, uh, because now I'm going there. By the time I come home, my children will not eat the book of Galatians. So <laughs> what, what, what will I do? Matthew uh, 21, 28. Where it, you have it there? He said, but what do you think? Now watch this one, so that we compare with the other one, then we go to some few points. But what do you think? A man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go, work today in my vineyard. Now, he answered and said, I will not. Did you hear that? I will not. But afterward, he regretted it and went. Then he came to the second and said likewise. And he answered. Look at this second one. He said, and he answered and said, I will go, sir. He even added, sir. Yeah. Ogao, I will go. Yes, sir. 
I will go. But he did not. Look at Jesus. Which of the two did, did the will of his father? They say to him, the first, just said unto them, Assuredly I say unto you, the tax collectors and harlots enter the kingdom of God before you. <laughs> Do you remember the story of Harlot Rahab on Sunday? Yeah. Sasa. Watch it to read the two. Slow. To Koko Wanja Katikati. Let's slow down there. The, the tax collectors and the harlots. You say they enter the kingdom before you. So, so, so what will make them enter the kingdom? It's not so much on the vineyard because we don't know what they were doing in the vineyard. It is the way they responded to the owner of the vineyard. There is a vineyard called Christ Harvesters. And there is a man who is always saying, say, you go. And the boy will say, yes, sir. Hmm. They will even shake. And, and be filled. But later, on Tuesday, everything has evaporated. Nothing is done to the vineyard. Nothing is done to the vineyard. And then, <laughs> just say now, you know what? Tax collectors. No tax collectors are not like tax collectors of today. They were wicked people. They are like drug ballots. They are wicked because you can't compare good people, tax collectors, with the harlots if they are good people. They are bad people. And say they will enter the kingdom. Means they will become the instruments like Rahab to, that will be used to replace the other guy and the family. So if you compare that one with the one that says, the one we have just read in the book of Luke 10 12, it shall be more trouble for Sodom and Gomorrah, where prostitution was, than these people who are full of dishonor. Are we together? Yeah. So there's something I want us to get there. The example that Jesus Christ, the example Jesus Christ is giving has nothing to do more with the vineyard but the person. Every ministry and every vision that ever became great, that, vision, that ministry had people that were willing. Listen. Listen. I have seen great men of God with great gifts of the Holy Spirit. I tell you the truth. You can speak in tongues and they interpret. You can enter the office before you tell them the problem. They will tell you what's your problem. Everything. But most of them go up to some places and they don't go far. And I was wondering and praying one time. And the Lord said to me, one of the things we like doing, even the church, you know, every time we hear, let's pray, the church will pray, oh my God, hey, let's pray for, like Apostle David, oh Lord, increase the anointing, increase the wisdom, increase the, and we pray, we pray, and we pray, so the anointing is on increasing, and everything is working, and then you hear most of those people can be very powerful, but they don't end powerful, and we think because they have committed error against God, no, I've discovered that the anointing is so powerful for, for a man to be exposed, yeah, to be exposed. Are you getting it? But for a man to maintain the vision, it is not so much on the power of the gift of the Holy Spirit, but the gift of people. The gift of people. The gift of what? That's why you'll never find a Catholic priest in a prayer mountain. No. You'll never find a Catholic father somewhere saying, Oh God, have mercy. Every power working against my life. There's no power working against his life. No. I was telling people in church, for example, I said, why, why do you always see government function in our country? Every time president is somewhere, the people praying 99.9% are Catholic priests. Catholic priests. Why do you think so? Some, 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 they look at me like uh, the president is Catholic. I said, no. Even during Moe's time, and Moe was not a Catholic for 24 years. Why? Because the members of Catholics are the ones that are surrounding the president everywhere. So when you want to propose who to pray, they will write their pastor's name. Yeah. Yeah. Then as here with the anointing, you know, Satan is very wicked. Actually, Satan would just let us stay with the anointing here and 40 days of prayer and fasting, shouting, vibrating, everything, you know. Sorry, we, we will never eat food and the food arrive in the stomach. Because of the way issues in the ministry and everything and everything. And then he pulls away the people we think they are not important, but they're important. 
in this life. I'm telling you, look at this. Jesus returned, the Bible says, full of power after prayer and fasting. What was the next thing after prayer and fasting? When picking, Peter, follow me. <laughs> you follow me. And Jesus did not go for any prayer and fasting again. He went only one. Prayer and fasting for 40 days, one. He booked two people. He had one man who was ready to kill for him. Cut somebody's ear for him. The moment Satan takes your eyes away, and now listen to this one and please take it in your heart. Take it in your heart. It is for your benefit. But you need to take it to you that you are not just, listen, when the church will get to the place where Jesus want them to get is when people will come to church and not think as members, but as the disciples, knowing we are sent here. Ah. One time they came, they told Jesus, do you know something? They are casting out demons in your name. That means they are using our label. But now you wonder, why are you so much? They say, this is our label, this is our vision, this is our dream. And they say, no, 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 if they are not against us, they are for us. That kind of passion. Can you think that? That kind of passion. Yes, you not say you are full of demons. No. Write this down, number one. The dreamer is the tool in God's hands. God will never come. God will never come, ladies and gentlemen, to this place, live. Live. That you see that door has opened, wow, and it's so bright. And you see a man walking in with a white suit. And, and everybody is told, and, and, and mom, Pastor Tabitha say now, ladies and gentlemen, let's rise up. Mother Nioka, the Lord has come. No, no. God gives a vision in a man and then releases that man as a tool. Look at that scripture. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have. But what, but what do I have? I give you in the name of Jesus. Do what? Rise up and walk. Now, look at this. Such as I have. So the story ends by saying what? And God did special miracles by the hands of the apostles. So it does not so God did special miracles and apostles were witnessing. No. He is a doer of special miracles. Such as I have. Who gave you? Jesus. That's what I have. I'm going to give you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. I want you church to understand and to value the tool that is in God's hands. Thank God for the dream he has. Thank God for the vision he has. But thank God more that he was available to get the vision. Are you going to get, look at Exodus chapter 4 verse 17? He said, and you shall take this road in your hand with which you shall do what? Signs. Okay, you know, please, and, 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 and don't look at me like uh, I'm contradicting something. But I keep on wondering. Because you hear even the songs singing. Vile mungu alifanya miujiza, miujiza kumi. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we will say, and we will say, and we will talk, and we will talk, and we will talk, and, talk, and it will end there. Even singers will compose. There were miracles took place. But nobody is remembering that they did not, they did not happen themselves. There is an English like that. The miracles did not happen themselves. <laughs> the miracles did not just appear by themselves. There was a rod that was not given to everybody, was given to Moses. So I know we are giving God all the glory. Yeah? But it does not mean when we give God all the glory, we break the channels. No. 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 It's just like a lady who can get married and then get three children and then start now dishonoring the man. And say, go, I, I have what I needed. No. The reason why you keep on even honoring that man or a man keeps on honoring the, this woman is because I am called daddy today. I call and I talk to my children home and I talk to them. And when I talk to them, at maybe I talk to them five minutes, all of them. Five minutes. Because we, don't, we don't have a lot to talk. They are not that big. And then the rest of the minutes we consume with their mother, the producer. <laughs> She's the one who brought them. Yeah. So you, you take all time talking with the product. And then you forget about the producer. Take this road. The road was not given to everybody. It was given to one man. So it is one man with the road doing all these wonders. And bring the children of Israel out. But they, they, they are not seeing Moses or seeing the road. Listen to me. Miracles are for your enjoyment. Heaven is for us all. 
But this man that God has brought your way is the property of heaven. Amen. Property of heaven. That's why not everybody was sent to Egypt. Moses. That's why not everybody is your pastor. Yeah. So you are needed to be where you are and to even go further. But only one vessel could handle that rod. That's the one I'm calling the dream carrier. <laughs> Listen to this. Joseph honored the dream of Pharaoh and he did not misbehave. Even when the father came, he went to Pharaoh and said, my father has come. Where will I put my father? Joseph became great. Why? He respected the dream and respected the dream career. But what about the brothers? They insulted Joseph and said, look at this boy, the dreamer. They removed his clothes. Ah, they suffered. <laughs> they were crying like babies. One occasion, they have a golden cup in their food. The other occasion, the younger brother, they have refused with him. The other occasion, and then later, they were all squatters in the land of their brother Joseph. They mishandled the dream career. They suffered in capital letters. Joseph handled the dream career and honored the dream. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now look at this one. Judges chapter 7 verse 18. It says, when I blow the trumpet, I and all who are with me, then you shall also blow the trumpet on every side of the whole camp and say the sword of the Lord and what? Now repeat that one. And what? The sword of? The Lord and the sword of? That, the part of Gideon is the one I want you to shout it. Because we forgot there is that part. We say when you hear the trumpet, shout the sword of the Lord. The sword of the Lord goes hand in hand with the sword of Gideon. So as you celebrate the sword of the Lord, Gideon also has the sword. And actually the sword of Gideon is more physical. It's the one cutting. The sword of the Lord is empowering the cutter. But the one that is cuttering is the sword of who? Let me tell you, people will be shocked when they get to heaven and they will discover there were some things they did not have. Not because they were not meant for them, but they were not entrusted to unlock them. But the one to unlock, they disconnected with him. Yeah. The sword of Gideon must be in place. The road of Moses, the sword of Gideon, the hands of the apostles. Yeah. Are you getting it? Yeah. So there is the dream, but don't celebrate so much the dream that you forget the dream career. Have, now, we say we are in class. We are not in church. We'll come to church next time. But listen to this class. Have you discovered that most of the time, most churches, this one and every other, any other church for that matter, they have no problem anytime there is a project that is church connected. But anytime you bring project that is a man of God connected, see trouble. See trouble. You see, listen, wickedness is a person. Because, no. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's a person. Because every, every, every church project, we will all benefit. If you want to change this carpet, this carpet, we want to put a new one, and heavy for that matter. We will all step on it, me stepping and you. When we are buying seats for the church, you want, when you are buying property for the church, everybody, and it's good, let's do it to the glory of God. But what about the one who had the dream? When his own comes, eh, eh. And that becomes the end of many people celebrating like Joseph. Joseph did not only handle the dream well, he also handled the dreamer well. Can I tell you how he did it? Can you imagine feeding the country for seven years without a drop of rain? And the Bible says they came to Joseph. They did not come to, they came to Joseph. Nobody was talking to Pharaoh. Joseph gave them food, sir, for seven years and he did not campaign to be the king. Can you imagine? Imagine that. Seven years, people, the Bible says, they brought, they, they bought, they were hungry, they came again, they sold their land. And no, th then he took that land and bought it for Pharaoh. I've been in Egypt before. When you are landing, the pilot will say, welcome to the land of Pharaoh. Joseph bought it for him. So if they were title D, all title Ds were brought and he, he changed them. They were all reading Pharaoh, owner, Pharaoh. There was no one written Joseph. Number two, People came and said, we have sold our land, so we are still hungry. We buy us. The Bible says, Joseph bought them to be the slaves of Pharaoh. Joseph bought them for Pharaoh. He didn't buy them for himself. 
He did not. All of them became the slaves of Pharaoh. And Joseph did not campaign and say, see, you don't need to be told. Who could have done this? He said, no, sir, it is your dream and you are the dreamer. I will not touch your throne. I will not mess with your dream until the end. God respected Joseph that even his bones were also feeding people in the wilderness. <laughs> as long as they had the bones of Joseph, they were eating in the wilderness without planting. The man had the grace in the grave. When they arrived in Canaan, they buried the bones. Then the manna stopped. Even when he was dead for the way he honored. Very blessed. Go to number two. Petra says, relate with the man of God as a dream career on perception level. Perception level only. And I put that word there, only, I will explain. Second Kings chapter 4 verse 9. Second Kings chapter 4 verse 9. And she said, you remember the woman... The man of God was just passing there in the house every time and, and she said to the husband, she said unto her husband, look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passed by us urgently. Please, let us make. Now, the word there, the word there in, in King James Version, this new King James Version, says, I perceive that this is a holy man of God. Now, for the, for the, for the, for the sake of time, let, let me narrate this story and then we will move, you'll see the scriptures say, this is the holy man of God. We will make him a house on top of our house. So that every time he's passing by here, when he's tired, he'll sleep there, eat here, and there was a candle so he can do his Bible study at night. And the Bible says they build the house, they finish building the house. <laughs> After the house was completed and the man of God was inside with the servant, then he said, Call that woman. Now, okay, let me finish. Call this woman. He said to the woman, what can I do for you? Can I mention your name before kings? And the reply of the woman was, I live among the pe my people. That means king is my cousin or something like that. So I don't need introduction. I am well connected. He said, okay, what is it? And the said, sir, this house has no charge. He said, hey, hey, hey. I thought they are they old couples. Hey, come, mama. Next year, a time like this, you'll have a baby. And the woman said, Man of God, do not lie to me. So this is one of the miracles that took place without faith. She did not believe for a baby. She said, don't lie to me. And that was the end of the statement. Then he said, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, no, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maid servant. She did not say, man of God, I believe. She said, I do not believe. Stop lying. We cannot have children. Now listen to this. <laughs> they... They, they did not, the woman did not perceive this the man of God after the miracle of the baby. The man of God did not perform a miracle for her to say, I perceive. She perceived first. She perceived? Her perception is the one that provoked it. She not only perceived, she perceived and she went ahead to build the house. After perceiving, she went ahead to build the house. Now, do you know the kind of danger we are? Most of you are connected on YouTube and, and, and you know, especially in our country, Kenya. We, most of us, men of God, we are praying day or night that God at least can give us a gift of miracles. Yes, so, perform miracles. If not miracle, the gift of discernment. If not discernment, the gift of prophecy. Because if at least if I can pull and I say there is a lady there called Jane Wanja, Jane Wanja, Jane Wanja, and then they stand three of them, I say, no, 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 I'm talking about Jane Wanja, the one whose birthday is tomorrow. Ha, ah, ah. ha. And I say, Jane Wanja, come on. Hey, Jane Wanja, yeah, I'm going home. I can see your family somewhere. There is this um, uh, tree of Mukindori. Yes. Now, then, 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 then people now will start saying, oh, Apostle Moses is a man of God. This woman perceived without any miracle or sign or wonder. That's the way you should relate with your man of God. Yeah. Not that I am anointed when I'm sweating. Or it was powerful because I was, ah, I am powerful even when I'm asleep. Yeah. Not that I'm powerful because I'm performing. Ah, no, no. 
If you bring me a sick person, I pray for them, and the dog gets healed, they die. I am still a powerful man of God. Because the Bible says thy faith has made you whole. So if you didn't have any, don't blame me. If you bring me a dead person, I don't resurrect them. I am still, this woman did not get a child. For, please get it. Get it. You will never be able to honor a dreamer if you relate them per the what they are. Oh, are they praying? Are they doing this? No. 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 I used to say this to our, our, our church, and most men of God, you hear them saying that, oh, you know me, you know I'm a focus man. I am just, um, if it's not office, I am home. Office, home. I've never been out. And I used to consider that a very powerful statement until I discovered most of them who are saying their children are bigger. Now me, when I go home, you think I will not go to the hotel? When I go home, you think I will not go swimming with my son who's this month is standing 12 years old? You think I'll go and say I'm just from America, let's sit down and watch Clefra Dollar? <laughs> we will have fun. We will dance. So if members are waiting there to see me every day, and some of them like when they say, the man of God, uh, you hear a man of God who goes to pray and fasting from Thursday, so that he can appear with glory on Sunday. You people have been torturing us. It's enough. Yeah, it's enough. Oh. Enough. Enough. Take me the way I am as your man of God. If you don't like, stop. Yeah. If you don't like, stop. I don't have to, to be doing something. That's why you're making men of God go collect power in wrong places. So when they come say, power, you're falling. Say, hey, I... Perceive me when I'm seated tired, I'm not even talking. But you can perceive and say, this is the man of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Perceive that this is the man of God, even in his sitting position. Shout I hear. Now, now, watch this. Abraham, seated in his tent, looked outside. What, what is Abraham seeing? Three men coming. You, you know they were angels, but the Bible does not say they were angels. They were coming towards him. And then what happened after that? The Bible says he ran and he said, come to my house, eat. You know, rest under the tree. And the Bible says, when they were eating, they said, next year time like this, Hannah will have a child. Han did Hannah say amen? Did Hannah say, I mean, Sarah, did Sarah say amen? Did Sarah shout I believe? What did she do? She laughed. And she said, we are too old for this. Was there a baby or not? So miracle, you, you, there are two women, old women in the Bible who got children without faith. They didn't have faith, but they perceived this is a man of God. Let's go to number three as we see how we're going to wind up now. I also, also, let's have Galatians. I don't know, I, I want you to, that's Genesis 18 about Abraham. And I want us to have Galatians, write it down there. Galatians chapter uh, four, verse number 13. The Bible says, you know that because of of physical infirmity, I preached the gospel to you at the first. And my trial, which was in my flesh, you did not despise or reject, but you received me as an angel of God, even as Christ with my infirmity. They normally say Paul had a bow legs, one eye was not clear, and then he was getting sick on and off. So can you imagine a man who is a bit sick and is coming and is preaching healing? And people are receiving him as an angel. Please, don't push men of God to a corner of trying to perform. So some of us have been reduced from miracle workers to magic workers, performance. So that we can try to prove a point. No, perceive this is a man of God. Quiet. I'm not talking. I have been in some countries where somebody will come and sit next to me and say, are you a pastor when I'm flying? Are you a man of God? Not that I was looking. I don't, I don't fly like this. Oh. I don't fly with it. No, I, when I was flying here, I had the, my track suit and uh, just flat shoes. I didn't even have socks and a T-shirt written Florida. <laughs> not that Jesus is coming soon. No, I was just like, there was nothing to show. But somebody will sit there and perceive. And you have members who are not getting, they, they feel the power when you are on your fourth point. And you roar. You are still far. Maintain, number three, and as we conclude, maintain a memorable relationship with the man of God. That is number three. Maintain a memorable relationship with him. That is Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse number 19. Deuteronomy 12, verse 19. Take it to yourself. 
that you do not forsake the Levite as long as you live in your land. Take it to yourself as long as you live on the earth. Let me, let me just do this and please just follow what I'm going to ask you to do. Everybody, can you lift up your hand and wave like this? Let me see your hand. Shout thank you, Jesus. That is one of the evidence that you are alive. So your mind must be remembering a Levite. A Levite. Levite is a platform of all fivefold ministries. Levite. You shall remember your Levite as long as you live. Now, it didn't say you shall remember the vision or the dream of a Levite. It said you shall remember the Levite, the one that I normally give the dream. As long as you live, make sure you don't forget the Levite. I borrowed a story here in the Bible, the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verse number 5. Those of you who uh, have gone through this book, you know a story that is very interesting of Hannah. And Hannah, uh, here, we normally talk about her and we sing, oh, Hannah, Napedina, and you know, we, we, we encourage ourselves like that. Have you heard that kind of a message? It doesn't matter how many peninas are surrounding you. Hannah, your child is coming. But let's, let's analyze Hannah. What was your problem, Hannah? What was your problem? Why would Penina, and if you check very well, Hannah was the, the first wife. You know? And Hannah could not conceive, so Elkanah went for Penina. But the first love, he had love for, for Hannah. Now, Hannah, <laughs> you read the story, the Bible says, she used to come before the Lord, and as people are giving this sacrifice, Hannah will give this sacrifice. The Bible says she was given more. So you can imagine, even when I'm preaching and you are here, you are Hannah, and I see you in church, I know something will change. Your sacrifice is not as other people's sacrifice. Hannah was the only one recorded at this time in Shiloh that was giving double. And then number two, Hannah used to pray the kind of prayer you have never seen. Hannah. Hannah must have come from Western Kenya where they pray and they hit on the ground. And they shout. You hear them saying, mm-mm, wanjala wacha mcheso ba. Wacha mcheso. Unamuliza ninini? Jeremiah 33, litie jina la buwana. Wacha mcheso, siku liongelea, litie. Haske, ba, ba, litie jina la buwana, wacha mcheso. Ini njili, si mcheso. So, Hannah could call on the name of the Lord until when she's coming, because why, why am I saying I When the man of God came and saw her, the man of God concluded she was drunk. She was not talking. So that means she was now coming from the prayer of all night. After hitting her legs down and kneeling for long, the way she's walking, she's tired. So the man of God said, Ai, hey, Anna, oh. uh, how long will you continue with this your drunkenness? So that means she had continued with that kind of prayer for long until the man of God concluded. I have not approached her for 10 years because she's the best giver. But now I am tired. What, why do you drink like this? I said, me. I It's not me. I don't drink. What is it? I am a woman of a sort of heart. What has happened to you? I don't have a child. Ah. The man of God laughs. Say, say, that one. Go. Have the baby. Hiya. You know the year did not end. So, look at this. Hannah loves God. Hannah brings double sacrifice to God. Hannah can talk to God for two, 12 hours, but Hannah does not care about the pastor of the church. After Hannah finishes her prayer, she will go home. Why talk to God and talk to man? So Hannah will sacrifice, and then Ananjia Mahombi. Baba, baba, baba. Akipita nona watu wamepanga line ko office ya pastor. These people, these people, these people cannot pray. They cannot pray. The only thing they do is to come saying, Pastor, pray for me. Hannah does not know. Prayer is in levels. <laughs> Prayer is in levels. They will say, there are those before they pray, I answer. So Hannah has no time to see the pastor, no. So one day God says, this one, and you know what the Bible says? It is God who had locked up the womb of Hannah. And you can imagine how Hannah was praying. Every generational curse. 
hear how my grandmama struggled to give birth. All this power. Break by thunder. Break by fire. I enter into a dimension of corrosive acidic prayer. <laughs> and the demons say, hey, hey, hey. Well, we are not in Bobo. God locked it. <laughs> and when God locked, the man of God can unlock. Yeah. But Hannah, yeah. I can't be talking to God and talk to men. So, Ellie, let me go. But God made sure that when Hannah was going this way, Ellie did not come through this door. Ellie came through that door. And Ellie said, go. And it will be to you according to your heart desire. Now, watch this. Verse number 12 say, and it happened. Now, as Hannah continued to pray before the Lord, that Ellie watched her mouth. Look at that. And Hannah spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved. <laughs> Can you imagine that kind of prayer? And then Ellie thought she was drunk. So Ellie said unto her, how long will you be drunk? <laughs> Put wine. Put your wine away from you. It's too much. But Anna answered and said, oh, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicated drink. Oh. <laughs> but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. Do not consider your maid servant a wicked woman. So much. She was never wicked. Get that? The reason she was not giving birth is not because of her wickedness. She was okay. For out of the abundance of my, my complaint and grief, look at that. Then Eli answered, simple, go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition, which you have asked. Failure of remembering the man of God, even to say hi, costed her over 10 years of barrenness. Yeah, why? Because after that, the, 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 the next testimony we hear Samuel comes. Now, watch this. Now, that is the best part. Please, let's read this one. All of us together. One, two, three, go. Now, when she had win him, she took him up with her. Okay, well, wait, wait, pause there. When Hannah was praying, she prayed and she told God, give me a son. And then what will I do? So she's bringing back a son to God, but she brings something else here. She said, she brought what? Three bulls. One ephah of what? Flour. And a skin of what? Of wine. And brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. Now, wait there. Wait there. He, she said she will bring Samuel. Samuel is for who? Samuel is for God. Is that right? Samuel is for? For God. But she has brought three bulls. <laughs> and let's call it a bag of flour. And wine. They are for who? Yeah? Yeah, thank you. You're a good student. Now, the three bulls and the rest of the staff are not for God. God does not eat booze. So he said, God, I have discovered I can be talking to you for over 10 years and you are not performing a miracle. I talked to the man of God once and a miracle happened. So you take Samuel and let the man of God enjoy these three booze. He thought I carry Samuel. God, the man of God will not eat Samuel. So let him eat this one and enjoy. In other words, I am now going before the Lord and I will also go before the man of God. The sword of God and the sword of Gideon. So God Take Samuel, man of God, collect the bulls, collect the bag of flour, and also there are some drinks here. They are yours. You God manage Samuel. Now look at this. I read the scripture in chapter two, chapter two verse number, uh, chapter two verse number twenty-one. Let's read that one together. One, two, three, go. And the Lord saw that, and bore what? Three sons, two daughters. Meanwhile, the child, Samuel, grew before the Lord. I discovered this scripture. I used to read it and I would think, Hannah conceived and gave birth and she conceived five times. No, the conception was once. And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived. One pregnancy produced five. One pregnancy. 
Kikuyu Bible say akegea ihu, tima hu ihu remwe. One pregnancy. Five children. So she got three sons to stand in for the three bulls. <laughs> that she took there. And the two, one for the bag of flour and the other one for the bag of wine. Now, Samuel is of God, but this is the miracle of not ignoring the servant of God. Now, look at this. She didn't have children for 10 years, so five children. Hey, where is Benina? <laughs> because Benina had children, like five or so, but every child by year. But Hannah, chewo. One, five children. This is not double manifestation. No. How do you call it? Five times manifestation. Five times manifestation. Listen to me. Some of you are praying every day and night, chasing demons. There are some demons you did not chase. Demons know who has been sent over you as your spiritual cover. And demons know how you treat or mistreat. And demons know how you talk in your heart about them. So that's the way the heaven responds that way. Please let me tell you, you can change the constitution of America. You cannot change the constitution called the Bible. It stands that way. So Hannah, you are prayerful. Thank you. You pray until there is no voice. Pray until you remove your lips if you want. But as long as you ignore the office that God has ordained to be there, you will struggle and Penina will beat you. And she's not even sacrificing like you. She's not even praying like you. Do not, listen, any time, no matter how anointed you are, never get anointed to ignore the offices that God has put in place. Never get, never get so much anointed that you go against the kingdom principles. Because principles cannot be broken by a man. But principle can break a man. So Hannah celebrated that she did not go to maternity five times. No. So Hannah is talking about going to the maternity twice and six children. One, one pregnancy, one. The deal they had with God, give me a son. Say, okay. So when the man of God came and said, oh, all these things here. Ah, go, Hannah. Go. And God said, Hannah, you are growing old. You don't need all this process. So you can imagine Hannah who was coming out of her house alone. Now she's coming out of her house, followed by children. Tato Shui, followed by children, five, <laughs> growing. And they are all at the same age, same age, same age, same age. Cha! The last one for today, let's go to the last scripture, number four. It is avoid getting into battles with a vision career. Let me, let me say this to you. You are a child of God. And I am also a child of God. The blood that washed you is the same blood that washed me. Yeah. Me, I was washed by the same blood of Jesus. <laughs> but the difference between me and you, who is a church member and a good church member, is that you got saved to go to heaven. Me, I was, I was saved. Your man of God was saved to go to heaven and take people. You, if you make it by yourself, they will stand up and say, oh, thank you, you have come here. But there are some men of God who are not expected to enter alone. They are expected to enter with a million. Yeah. So if you bring a war against the man of God, okay, let me, okay, I wanted to say you try, but he's not good. Uh, if, you, if you're fighting with a fellow member in the church, and you fight against the man, okay, like, if you want, but don't do it, you can take this year to fight with members and see how your suffering will be measured. And then next year, fight the man of God see the rewards. Because of this scripture that you people claim is your own, but is ours first. Isaiah 54 verse 17 say, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants. <laughs> this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Now, two important things there. There is no weapon fashion against those who serve me that shall prosper. And every tongue that is raised against them. That one you can read in any version you want. It will remain the same. I shall condemn it and say, the righteousness of the servant of God is of the Lord. Now listen to me. I can measure your righteousness, but you can't measure my own. My righteousness is of God. Did you get that one? And then he says, the righteousness of, so no weapon fashion against the man of God shall prosper. So, fashioning is permitted. If you want to fashion, fashion. 
That's a permitted. But for it to prosper, it will never prosper. It, it will never prosper. Do you know why? I got it, Apostle Paul makes it well. Look at Apostle Paul, what he says. Also, this one we claim like the scripture for everybody, but if you read well, you understand. Apostle Paul is talking to the church of Corinthians. This is what he's saying. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God, so it is a we. It, you know, we read it like we, all of us. No. Here he's referring about him and uh, 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 what's this other apostle? Not Apollos. No, I mean, not. Uh, there is another apostle he talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Um, okay, we'll get him. He said, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We employ you in Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So we are Christ's ambassadors, employ you, church members, be reconciled to Christ. Did you get that one? So the servant of God stands a place of ambassador. Who is ambassador? Representing the interest of of a certain country to another. If a country is at war, when Libya, they were fighting, you can remember, you follow the story, I saw Kenya, we sent four big KQs, Kenya Airways plane, to go and bring our people from Tripoli. But before the first jet or plane could land to be Kenyans from Libya, the ambassador was already home. Why? Because those Kenyans who went there, they went there because they sent themselves, but the ambassador was sent. That's the difference. Yeah. If we have issues with America today, Jeru Gedai, I don't know if he's still the ambassador. Jeru Gedai will be home before you people are taken home. If you are here, you are a Kenyan. Before you are taken back to your country, he will have gone there. Because you, you brought yourself, and you know why you brought yourself here, for your own interest. But the ambassador was, did not come here because of his own interest. He was sent here to, for the interest of the kingdom. So Apostle Paul is saying, don't treat us like we are equal. We are washed by the same blood. But you, you are washed by the same blood to enjoy the green card of the heaven citizenship. But us, before we enter in our mother womb, we were separated to be prophets. So we are saved to be used by God. You are saved to enter heaven. Okay, everybody is supposed to serve God. But you'll get to what I'm saying. Now, listen to this. Thank you, Jesus. And then we pray. You can never attack the ambassador and the country that has sent him will not say something. Never. In our country, I remember we wanted to send away Renberger. And uh, that time, one of the guys working here is an American citizen, but he's from Kenya. He's from Kisiland. The brother is a pastor and he's my friend. He works with the military very high, high levels. Last time he came to Kenya, he only came once since he came here after university. Last time he came to Kenya, the cousin told me he was escorted. He came with uh, about close to 20 secret service to take him home, protecting him. He had armored car. Actually, that story came because he gave the cousin one. When he came to visit, he landed, he was taken direct to the embassy. He could not be permitted to go to Kisi. To see the parents. So the parents and the relatives came to the embassy. Because that time the parliament was planning to send away Ranbaga home. So there was no good relationship. They could not trust. Their, although he's a Kenyan but he's an American now. And because he works in the military. He has maybe high secret. They will not let him go that way. So he will stay in the embassy because he's protected. Why? Embassy is where they have sent their man. It's not where Americans went to, as tourists. No, this is safe. So that in case of anything, they will be taken there by the soldiers back here in America. Why? They are there with assignment. Your man of God is here with an assignment sent from heaven. Any weapon fashion against him shall not prosper. And the Bible says that is his heritage. The moment he got saved, he was given that as his heritage. Bulletproof. Bullet. So every time he wakes up, there's a bulletproof. Any weapon fashion against you, let them throw. But you, the thrower, hey, may God have mercy on you. No weapon fashion again. So please do not only mind about the dream, also mind about the dreamer. Rise to your feet in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Can you put your hands together for Jesus? Come on, let's celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords better. Can I tell you something? There are people who are watching football now and... Uh, 
the team they support, when the, that team scores, the people who shout more are the people that will not get anything when they go back to the country. They will not get anything. They will not, their names will not be written, but they celebrate because of the victory of their team. Let us lift our hands and celebrate the Jesus. Let's give him the highest praise. The winner, Jesus Christ. The winner, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Lift up your hands to the Lord. Thank you, Father, for as it is written in the book of John, you so loved the world that you send us Jesus. And Jesus so loved the church that in the book of Ephesians, he left the fivefold ministries, the place of the prophet, the apostles, the pastors, the teacher, the evangelist, to edify the church. Then you gave these apostles and pastors visions and dreams. And that's why today, we have the Christ harvesters. I pray that in the name of Jesus, you will not only preserve the vision, but you'll also preserve the vision now. We pray that in the name of Jesus, oh God, you raise men and women that will not only fight like Joshua in the valley, but there will also be men holding the hands of Moses who owns the vision, so that his hands will not be tired. For when the hands of Moses are tired, then there will be no victory in the valley. Father, I pray that in Jesus' mighty name, in this great ministry that is touching life, not only here in America, but also outside there in Kenya and other nations, that Lord, you begin to raise pillars, men and women, that will be full of this dream and full of remembrance of the one that you have called so that in the name of Jesus we will all do the assignment of the kingdom and at the end of all this glory and honor will be unto you father I pray that in Jesus mighty name the seed that is not planted by God in this ministry shall not have a place we decree that that seed will not have water that seed will not have fertile ground that seed will not have fertilizer, that seed will not grow, that seed will not germinate. But we pray, let the seed that is planted by God begin to grow in this place in the name of Jesus. Lord, this is the arena where you are raising champions. You do not only send your servant here to be ministering to people, but as what we have seen is to even raise a team and minister with them. Father, I pray that in Jesus' name, let your call be strong in this house. Let the conviction of the men and women that you're calling to serve in this dream, to serve the one that you give the dream, be strong. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, none of us here will miss their dream or become small. We pray that there will be many Josephs than Joseph's brothers. Many of us here will serve the dream and honor the dreamer and not say, here cometh the dreamer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let your grace and the grace of honor be in this house now and the days to come. Father, we thank you. We honor you and we celebrate you. In Jesus' mighty name. And the church shout amen. And the church shout amen. Come on, let's lift our hands and celebrate the Lord. He's worthy. Amen. Even as we receive God's servant to come and continue from here. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, sir. Let's celebrate God once more time. Amen, 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 amen. What a, a powerful word the, the servant of God has delivered. <clears throat> and our assignment as a people is to receive the world. Because the moment the world is sent, it's sent for you and it's a profit when the world is received. Somebody celebrate God one more time.
My sister, you are not ordinary. You carry the God of the universe. My brother, you are not an ordinary person. You carry the God of the whole earth. 